What about the uh, significant, I mean, in the last few years, statistically, it's got to be a major significant thing, about the increase in autism in our country. It's just like, it was at one time one out of every 15,000. I know, now, now one, one out, in 100 in New Jersey. 150 in, in New Jersey? In one in 100. What are your thoughts on okay, that Okay, I, as have, a, as I a have a couple thoughts. Uh, first of all, it used to be when I was a kid, you were a kid, you got uh, maybe four immunizations. Mm -hmm. Now... There's 125 different shots by the time a kid turns 12. So 125. 125 different shots. Mm. And so each of those shots has an adjuvant, whether it's they've removed thimerosal, which is the mercury from some, not all. And then there's also aluminum. These are heavy metals. Aluminum's not heavy, but it goes right to the brain. And I believe that in a susceptible child, when you give that many assaults, to the immune system and the neurologic system when it's growing so rapidly. It's a setup for problems in the autism spectrum, such as Asperger's syndrome and so on. So I believe that that is one example. There's also research cited by Dr. Pat Allen that when you have kids who are raised in a family where there's not a lot of other people around and they're stuck in front of the television and so on, they don't wire in the social skills area. They become more bonded to things mm -hmm. than to people. There's also a deficiency in many people of omega-3 fats in the diet. That's fish oil and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, a lot of people are actually afraid their kid's going to get fat, so they feed them a low-fat diet. Worst thing you can do. The brain is made up of, it's a lot of water, but then mm -hmm. the part that isn't water it's is fat. fat. Right. And it has to be omega-3 fat which has many more folds in it and many more, it's, it's unsaturated, and that's what the cell membranes are made out of. So, and so it's, it's that combination of things. What would you tell parents then who are told by school boards, because I've experienced this over on Maui where I live, that, uh, that tell the parents that they cannot have their children come to school. I think now on where I live, I think there's 37 of them that are required by the state in yeah, order so what for them do, to enroll um, in the school. What would you recommend? A friend of mine has written a book called Say No to Vaccines, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Mm -hmm. And if you go to her website, just Google Sherry Tenpenny, S-H-E-R-R-I, mm -hmm. Tenpenny, T-E-N-P-E-N-N-Y. And Sherry said they are about to release hard data that vaccines cause medullary strokes. The medulla, of course, is the brain stem. Mm -hmm. Medullary strokes, mini strokes, that actually start to affect the way the eyes track. Mm -hmm. And they have data on this. I think she's been invited by someone to the World Court in The Hague to testify about what we're doing to our children. Because again, this is another meme that health is associated with anti with all these vaccines against, that you can somehow build health by giving more and more and more and more vaccines. They've now also approved the use of the statin drugs in children. Mm. So instead of a lifestyle choice, you start giving a kid with high cholesterol a statin drug. And there are other vaccines on the horizon that they will, you know, they're probably going to come up with an anti-shyness vaccine. Right, a vaccine there's, that you there's huge money to be made, but you, you should know that legally, you can avoid vaccines legally. In our state, we could simply say that we were against it for religious reasons, which I did, and I wasn't against it for any religious reasons. So Kate didn't receive a single vaccine until she was 16, and I got tired of fighting it. And she had tetanus when she went to camp. Um, but people are, the other thing that's so funny is people say, well, if your child isn't vaccinated, my child will be at risk. Mm -hmm. And you go, why? Your kid's <laughs> vaccinated. Isn't that supposed <laughs> right, to protect right. them? Yeah. I mean, that makes no sense, right? <laughs> well, what about the counter argument to that about that we've eradicated polio, for example, on our planet through vaccines? What's fascinating about all that data mm -hmm. is that in every major epidemic, it was on the way out by the time the vaccine got mm. put in. Here's the thing. This is my favorite line from Jurassic Park, okay? Nature always finds a way. Mm. So here's the thing. When you eradicate one thing, what do you do? You strengthen something else. It's mm -hmm. the Tao. It's right. the yin and the yang. Mm -hmm. And so what have we done now with antibiotics? We have created superbugs, MRSA, 
the methicillin and penicillin resistant staph and the stuff in hospitals that's so scary. And this has now gotten into the community because when you are against something, you make it stronger. But when you're more like water, then it does its course. I'm always fascinated by, if you look at the diseases that different cultures have. So yes, we may be eradicated polio, although what I said, it was on the way down Mm -hmm. anyway. And then what came in? More and more cancer, HIV came in. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of one thing after another. And I believe that our approach to it needs to change, where we shore up community, immunity, nutrition, nitric oxide, all of that so that people become very, very...